Hi, I'm Stu Miniman here at the Cube Studio in Palo Alto, in the center of Silicon Valley. Happy to welcome back, first of all, a, a many-time guest of the Cube, Kevin Deerling uh, with Mellanox, and also someone that I've known for many years, but the first time we've actually gotten him <laughs> under the lights in front of the cameras, uh, Marty Lands with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about networking today, and not just networking, but you know, storage networking. So, you know, kind of one of the dark corners of the IT world that uh, you know, there's those of us that have known each other uh, for decades, uh, it, it seems, uh, and uh, but you know, pretty critical to a lot of what go, goes on in the environment. Uh, Kevin, you know, l l let's start with you. You know, we've caught up with Melnox a bunch. Obviously, we do uh, a lot of uh, video with HPE. We'll be at the Discover Show, uh, you know, in, in Europe coming on soon. But uh, you know, wh why would you bring Marty? Uh, you know, long to uh, talk about some of this stuff. Yeah, so HP has been a longtime partner of Mellanox. We're really not necessarily known as a storage networking company, but in fact, we're in a ton of storage platforms with our InfiniBand. So we have super high quality reliability. We're built into the major storage platforms in the world and enterprise appliances. And now with this new work that we're doing with Marty's team at HPE, we're really building what we consider to be the first ethernet storage fabric that will scale out what we've done in other worlds with dedicated storage platforms. Okay, Mar Marty, before we get into some of the you know, things you're doing in Mellox, uh, to tell us a little bit about you know, your role, how you fit inside you know, Hewlett Packard Enterprise that is, as it's made up today. Yeah, you bet, Stu. Yeah. I, um, so I'm responsible for storage networking, or the connectivity for storage, as well as our interoperability. So if you think about it, it's a, uh, it's a very broad kind of category from a role perspective. Um, you know, we have a lot of challenges with uh, with all the new types of storage technologies today, and that's where uh, that's where Mellanox starts to come in. Yeah, and so, so just elaborate a little bit, like what fits, what what products do you have? You know, is you know, NICs and host bus adapters, you yeah. know, switches. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> what, what falls under your purview? Pretty much everything. Okay. Everything you just mentioned, right? So we carry uh, traditionally all the traditional storage connectivity products all of uh, fiber channels, switches, adapters, optics, cables, pretty much the whole ecosystem. Okay, uh, and so what we're ta talking about is, you know, the ethernet storage fabric. So, Ke Kevin, why don't you set it up for us as to, you know, what that term means. Uh, you know, we, we talked about fiber channel. Fiber channel is a, you know, bespoke network designed for storage, a lot of times run by storage people or storage networking people, uh, kind of underneath that umbrella, uh, you know, what, what, what's happening with the ethernet side. Yeah, I think what you look at the traditional SAN network, it was fiber channel, and the metrics that people evaluate that on are performance and reliability and intelligence, storage intelligence. Today, when you look at that on all those metrics, Ethernet actually wins. So we can give three times the performance for one third the price. Everything is built in in terms of all of the new protocols like NVMe over fabrics, which is a new one that's coming, obviously iSCSI, and taking some of the things that we do in terms of intelligence like RDMA, which is Rocky uh, over Ethernet, that's what really enables NVMe over fabrics. You know, we have that end-to-end -end supply of switches, adapters, and cables, and working with HPE, we can bring all of the benefits of the platform that they have and all of the software to that world, and suddenly you've got something that's unmatched with Ethernet, uh, and that's the Ethernet storage fabric. All right, so, so Marty, one of the things I, I've said a bunch over the last couple of years is nothing ever dies, uh, so, you <laughs> sure. know, but Fiber Channel, it's, it's dead, right? Isn't that what it, well, this means? Why, yeah. why don't you help us a little bit with the nuance of what you're seeing, what customers you're asking, and of course, there, there's certain administrators that are like, I know it, I love it, I'm going to keep buying it for years, so. Yeah, well, but, you know, I guess uh, Fiber Channel is still alive. It's doing very well. Um, I think from a you know from a primary storage perspective, I mean that's where that's where fiber channel is is used, right? When you um, today's today's storage though, I mean there's a lot of different technologies, and I like to look at this in a couple of ways. One, you look at the evolution of media, right? You're going from disk, like we went from tape to disk, and now we're going from disk to uh, to flash, right? And flash to NVMe, and now we have you know we have things like performance and latency requirements that aren't that weren't there before. And the bottleneck has moved, you know, from the storage array to the network. So having, you know, that's that's having a having a network that creates, a, you know, great latency is is really the issue at state. We have latency roadmaps. We don't have performance roadmaps, right, from a storage perspective. So that's that's the big one. Kevin, I'm sure you want to comment on some of the latency piece. That's Mellanox's legacy. So. Yeah. So you know, with some of the things we're doing now, NVMe over fabrics, we're adding 10 
microseconds of latency. So you've got an NVMe flash drive. When it was spinning rust uh, and it took 10 milliseconds, who cared what the network added? Today, you really care. We're down to the tens of microseconds to access an NVMe flash drive. When you move it out of the box, now you need to network it. And that's what we really do, is allow you to access NVMe over fabrics and iSCSI and ICER and things like that in a remote box and you're adding less than 10 microseconds of latency. It's incredible. Yeah, uh, it, it's right, Marty. I, I think back, even 10 years ago, there was a lot of times, okay, do I want InfiniBand, do I want Ethernet, do I want a fiber channel? And mm. there were more political implications than there were yeah. technical architectural uh, I implications. You know, I, I said five years ago, the storage protocol wars are dead. That being said, it doesn't mean that we're still sorting those out. What, what are you hearing from customers? Uh, any more nuance you want to give on uh, kind, of, kind of that piece as to, you know, architecturally right. I mean, Ethernet can do it all today, right? Sure. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it does. So, I mean, th I think those challenges are still there, right? You still have that, you mentioned political, and I think yeah. that's that's something that's still going to be there for quite some time. Yeah. Um, the nice the nice thing we did with, with Mellanox and what we did uh, in our own technology for storage connectivity, you know, we innovated in an area that I think really hasn't been innovated, that was rich for, or ripe for innovation. Um, so creating an environment that gives the storage network administrator the same capabilities of what you get in Fiber Channel, we can do on an Ethernet uh, network today. Okay. And, so. and, and Marty, you know, one of the things, when we get partnership announcement like this, yeah. like bring us inside, talk to us about what engineering is being done, how is this more than just sticking you know, a, a lovely new logo <laughs> on it, you know, what, what development, what, what, what's HPE been bringing to this offering? So we did, uh, you know, first when we started, before we, before we get to the Ethernet side, yeah. uh, we built some something called SmartSAN. It's automation orchestration for fiber channel networks. And uh, that was a big success. And what we did after that was we looked at from the Ethernet perspective, we said, why can't we do it there? You know, it's in band, uh, it's real time access, and it gives you the ability to do all the nuances of what makes Ethernet hard. You know, automate and orchestrate all the Ethernet capabilities to behave much like a fiber channel network. So this is a four to five year development cycle that we're in, in terms of developing these products and sitting down with Melnox. So this is not a, it's not just a, a marketing relationship. Um, there is a lot of engineering development work that we've done with Melnox to storage optimize their products. Um, to make them specifically designed to handle storage traffic. Yeah, I, K Kevin, it just it's interesting. I think back to, uh, you know, let, let, let's say there's the big, you know, other Ethernet company. When they got into Fiber Channel, they learned a lot from the storage side that they drove into some of their Ethernet products. So you, you kind of see learning going back and forth and, you know, it's a small industry we, yeah. we have here. <laughs> a lot of those, what, 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 did, what did HPE bring to the table? And, you know, more importantly, you know, what, what's the latest as to what makes the Ethernet storage fabric you know, what, what's going to move the needle on some of that storage adoption? Yeah, you know? I think the key thing is, as Marty said, if you look at it, you've got to be able to be familiar with all of the same things. You need to provide the same level of protection. So whether you're using data center bridging to have a lossless network, you know, we have zero packet loss switches, which means that our switches don't drop packets under the cases where you've actually oversubscribed a network. We can actually push back, we can use PFC, we can use ESCN, all of that, and on top of that, what's happened is the look and feel to be able to manage things just like it's fiber channel. So all that intelligence that HPE's invested in so much for over the years is now being brought to bear on Ethernet. One of the big things we see is in the cloud, people have already moved to a converged network where you're seeing compute and networking and storage all on the same fabric. And really that's Ethernet. And so what we're doing now is bringing all of those capabilities to the enterprise. So we think that 15, 20 years ago, there was really no choice. Fiber channel was absolutely the right choice. Now we're really trying to make it as easy as possible to make that enterprise transformation to be cloud-like. Yeah, uh, it, it's funny. I mean, Marty, you, you and I worked for EMC back when that storage yeah. network was being designed. Architecturally, I mean, those of us who have been in networking since before Fiber Channel, we would have loved to do it with Ethernet, but there were limitations, you know, it was CPU, it was, you know, yeah. the network itself, it would have been nice, but now, you know, fast forward, it was like Flash had been around for a long time before, oh wait, now it's ready for enterprise, uh, now it feels like Ethernet has gone through a lot of that journey. Uh, you're welcome to comment on that, uh, but the, the question I want to have from the storage side, we're going through so many changes. HPE has a very large, uh, you know, uh, portfolio, a number of acquisitions, as well as many yeah. things that HPE is doing. We talked about NVMe, NVMe over fabric, you talk about hyperconverged, talk about scale out NAS. Yeah. Networking is not trivial when it comes to building out distributed architectures, and of course, storage has very particular requirements when it comes to the network. Yeah. So, you know, 
you know, what are you hearing from your customers uh, from the storage side of the business? How, how, how does HPE pull those pieces together and how does this Ethernet storage fabric fit into it? Yeah, and, you know? and I mentioned it earlier, right? We talked about um, the primary array being, you know, fiber channel, right? Uh, you know, if you, if you take a look at where, where storage has gone, I mean, you talk about the cloud, you talk about all these big data, you've got, you know, now you've got secondary storage, you've got hyper-converged storage, you've got NAS scale out, you've got object, I mean, you go on and on now, right? And all these different storage technologies are, are representing almost 80% of all the data that's out there. Um, most of that data, or all that data, if you want to think about it, is, is connected by Ethernet. Now what's interesting is, um, from our perspective, is that you know we have a we have a purview of all that capability right we I see that challenge that customers are having and the problem is that these these customers are are finding is you know they go through the first layer of, of challenges which is any storage capabilities they need in these technologies in these storage technologies and then they get to the next layer that says oh by the way the network isn't that great and so this is where we saw an opportunity to create something that um, created the same category of uh, capabilities as you got on your primary to the rest of the storage technologies. They're already using Ethernet. It's a great opportunity to provide another a dedicated network that does uh, connectivity for all those other types of storage devices, including primary. Yeah, is yeah. there anything along kind of the, the, the management uh, of these type of environments? How similar, how much yeah. retraining do you need to do uh, if, if your customers are you know probably going to manage both for a while? Yeah, so. yeah. I, from, a, from a usability perspective, it's, it's quite easy. I think what you know, customers are going to find, and uh, we use we use fiber channel as the lowest common denominator in terms of everything has to meet the Ethernet network has to meet those kind of requirements. So what we did, we replicated that capability throughout the rest with our automation orchestration capabilities. It gives us the you know the feature from a from a customer perspective is really a, a hands off uh, kind of solution. It's really nice. Yeah, uh, it, it's the, the other piece is uh, you know Kevin maybe you know how's the application portfolio changing? You know you, you mentioned a little bit some of those you know really uh, you know specific latencies that that we have. W what are you seeing from customers from the application portfolio? Uh, you know David Floyer from Wikibon's been talking for a long time. You know HPC is going to become mainstream in the enterprise, uh, which seems to kind of pull all of these pieces together. Yeah, that's so. Mellanox's heritage. You know we came from the InfiniBand world with HPC were really good at building giant supercomputers, and the cloud looks very much like that. And when you talk about things like big data and Hadoop and Spark, uh, all of these activities for analytics, all these workloads, so it's not just the traditional enterprise database workloads that need the performance, but all of these new data intensive. And Marty really talked about the two different elements. One was the faster media, and the second was just the breadth of the offering. So it's not just primary block storage anymore, you're talking about object storage and file storage and hyper-converged systems. We're seeing all of that come into play here with the M-series switches that we're introducing with HPE. What's happening now is you've got a virtualized, containerized world that's using massive amounts of data on super fast storage media and it needs the network to support that. All of the accelerations that we've built into our adapters, all of the smarts that we're building into the switches and taking all of this management framework and automation that HPE is delivering, we've got a really nice solution together. Excellent. Well, what, what, one of the things I love when we talk networking here is, yeah, the containerized world, we're going to talk serverless, some of this stuff, just trying to explain it in a way that people can understand. Marty, I heard an M-series, uh, there's probably boxes. There's actually, like, you know, Physical. gear uh, yeah. that, that people can buy. Of course, the software and, you know, everything critically important, but walk us through a little bit the product line, you know, what, what, what sets it apart from what you've done before and, and what makes up the product line there. Yeah, a lot, a lot of compliments to Mellanox and the way they designed the products. I mean, we have, uh, first and foremost, I like to call out the, you know, they have a, a smaller product that we're working with from an ASIC perspective, it's a 2100 series. It's nice because it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a half width box, right? So it allows you to get full redundancy on a single one U uh, tray, if you want to think about it that way. From a real estate perspective, it's really nice and it's extremely powerful. So we, you know, with that solution, um, you have, you have the power and I guess the cost savings being able to do what you know many different networks can do at, at, at like three times the cost in a very like a very small form factor, right? And that's very nice. And with the software that we do, you know, we t we talked about the. Um, what kind of automation we have. It's all the basic stuff that you'd, you'd imagine, like the discovery, the diagnostics, all the things that are manual in an Ethernet world, we provide automated in a, in a uh, storage environment. Yeah, it, it, and 
what about kind of some of the speeds and feeds? You know, we, we've got so many different oh, flavors yeah. of Ethernet now. I remember it took like a decade for 10 gig to go from standards to most customers doing. Now it wasn't just 40 and 100, but we've got, you know, 25 and 50 in there. So all of them, are there interoperability concerns? Any, any kind of things that you want to say, hey, yes, this, or, you know, not ready for that? Yeah, well, yeah. I'll say that the, uh, the market is, you know, that, you know, diverse on many different speeds and feeds, right? So we do support all of them in the technology, even from a storage perspective, right? Some of our platforms will support 25 gig, some will support 40 gig. So with the solution, we can do, you know, we can do one, we can do 10, 25, 40, 50, 100. And what's nice is it gives you the, um, regardless of what technology you're using, you have the capability to, to use the, uh, the technology. Yeah, Kevin, I want to give you the opportunity. What are you hearing from the customers these days as, you know, what are the pain points, you know, you talk, it used to be, right, some of those speeds and feeds, you know, okay, wait yep. around, when can I do the upgrade? It's something that's a massive, you know, thing that we have to undertake from the backbone all the way through. So, um, are we moving faster or customers, you know, I, I know we all talk, it's agility and speed, but, you know, how, how about the network? Is it keeping up? Yeah, yeah, I think we are keeping up. I mean, the, the thing we hear from customers customers is about efficiency of using their platform. So whether it's the server or the storage and the network, they don't want to be in the way. So you don't want to have stranded assets with an NVMe drive stuck inside of a server that's run at 10% and you've got another unit that's at 100% and needs more. And really that's what this disaggregation and software defined storage is all about, is taking advantage and getting the most out of the infrastructure that you've invested in. One NVMe drive can saturate a 25 gig link. So we have people that are saying, give me more bandwidth, give me more bandwidth. So we can saturate with uh, 24 drives, you know, 600 gig links. The bandwidth is incredible, and we're able to deliver that with zero packet loss technologies. So really that's what people are asking for. There's more and more data being generated and processed and analyzed to do efficient business models, new business models, and they don't want to worry about the network. They want it to configure itself automatically and just work and not be the bottleneck, and we can do that. Yeah, Marty, can you up level for us a little bit here, you know, when I think about HP, some of those, you know, it comes pre-configured, I know it, that's I, that's what I've known HPE for, it was, yeah. of course, HP for most of my career, but, you know, even back by some of the earliest jobs, it's like, well, rack comes fully configured, everything's in it, so yeah. when I look at this announcement and, you know, HPE, server, storage, network, yeah. uh, you know, some, some of the other pieces, what's important about this, how does this fit into the overall picture? Yeah, I mean, customers are used to having that service level from us, right? Delivering those kind of uh, solutions. And this is no this is no different. I mean, with um, we, we, we saw a lot of challenges with all these different types of networks or the network being the challenge with these new types of storage technologies. So having um, having these solutions brought to you uh, in a way that we've we've done with the primary storage array, um, I think, you know, is going to make customers pretty happy about it, yeah. All right, Kevin, want to give you the final word, uh, you know, what, what should we look for uh, in, in this announcement, any last things that, that we haven't covered, and uh, what, what should we look for uh, th through the rest of 2017? Yeah, I think as Marty said, it's, uh, this is the beginning. Uh, we have a strong relationship with HPE on the adapter side, on the cables, on the switches, also on the Synergy platform that we've done the, the switch for that as well. So 25, 50, 100 gig is here today. You know, it's shipping, we're really seeing, we say 25 is the new 10 because this faster storage needs faster networks and uh, we're here to deliver, I think, pay attention, we're going to do some new things. There's lots of innovation coming. All right, Kevin Deerling, Marty Lance, thanks so much for bringing us the updates and thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman.